My name is Nathan Sturdivant. I'm a professor at the University of Alberta, and today I'm going to present joint work with Malta Helmert on budgeted tree search. This is a new algorithm that's been recently invented, and we're presenting this as a position paper at SOX, and it's a companion to original work that was published that has a lot more details on the broader applicability of a general idea called IVEX. We're just looking here at the specific instance of budgeted tree search. So we're going to answer two questions today. Why do we need budgeted tree search and how does budgeted tree search work? In order to do that, we're going to look at an example state space, which is the three by two sliding tile puzzle. We'll use this throughout the talk today. The goal is that we have a start state and we want to transform this into the goal state by taking actions one at a time. We have a heuristic that estimates the number of actions that we'll take to get there. And then we're going to, by applying, ac applying actions, going to try to find actually the optimal sequence of actions that takes us between the start and the goal. Okay. So generally speaking, a search problem is defined by a start state, a goal state, a successor function, and a cost function. And these four things put together give us an implicit graph. So many problems will not fit in memory. Therefore, we'll need to use something like a depth first search to be able to fit the problem in memory. And uh, we get that from this implicit graph. And then we also have a heuristic function, which is estimating these costs. There's some properties on here I'm not going to go into today. Um, but the goal, at least for today, again, is to find optimal paths between the start and the goal. So the first question we want to answer is, why do we need budgeted tree search? And in order to understand that, we need to look at IDA star, which is the algorithm that we're going to be comparing against. IDA star is an algorithm that does iterative deepening on F costs, where F costs are estimates of the optimal cost from the start to some node N, and then from N to the goal. And so the G cost is the cost from the start to N, the H cost is the estimate from N to the goal. And the idea is that IDA star is very conservative when it searches, it searches from the minimum F cost and then the next greatest F cost and continues and does iterative deepening iterations with each possible F cost. Let's look at how this works. So this is an IDA star search tree. And in this problem, we're gonna show the equivalency between the search tree and the actual sliding tile puzzle on the uh, right hand side. And what we can see here is a couple of things. The nodes that are highlighted in blue are the nodes that will be searched as part of the current iteration. The color of the nodes in the tree uh, tells us what the F cost is. So in this particular instance, we have three possible F costs in the tree. And now we can watch the search run. So it's going to search in a depth first manner through the current tree. And it's going to continue this process until it uh, goes down and it finds the goal on this branch. So that's how IDA star works. And IDA star has been a successful algorithm in practice because of a few things. So the first thing we notice here is that when the F cost, um, so when we look at how many nodes for a given F cost, we're going to count how many nodes there are or how many states there are in the state space with that particular F cost. And so we see uh, for F cost 11 that we have two states. When we have F cost of 13, that grows to 16 states. So that's growing by actually a large factor, a factor of eight. And when we go to F cost 15, we get to 79 states in the tree. And so that's growing by a factor of five. And as long as that grows by a constant factor, then we see exponential growth in the tree. Now, IDA star assumes that there will be exponential growth. And if you do, what you see is you start with one node at the root, and then this is going to grow b nodes, b squared, b cubed, all the way up to b to the d, where b is the branching factor. And when you grow exponentially like this, here we're multiplying by a factor of b, then it ends up that the overhead of doing the multiple iterations is amortized away or is less than a constant factor. If the f costs only grow linearly, then we see something different happening. We would start with one node, but then we may only see two or three, four or five in our iterations. And when you add those up, you get b to the d squared. So this is uh, going to be really bad in practice. And this can actually happen, and we're going to show one way of it happening when we use edge costs that are just slightly, uh, slightly different than the unit edge costs that are typically used. So here, the cost of moving a tile is determined by the tile itself. So tile 1 has cost 1.5, where tile 9 has cost 1.1. And when we do this and run IDA star, what we see here, um, now we're running uh, very fast, but we see here that the tree is actually still growing very slowly. 
And the reason why is that in this tree, I'm not going to let this finish, but in this tree, we don't have many, many states with the same F cost. Actually, most nodes have unique F costs. So the first iteration is one node. The second iteration would be two nodes, those with F cost 11 and 11.25, then three nodes, including 13.45, four nodes with 13.5, and so, in fact, this is exactly the worst case by using such a simple cost function here. Um, each of our iterations is just one node larger than the previous iteration. And so why do we need budgeted tree search? Well, if the nodes in each iteration do not grow exponentially, then we need something like budgeted tree search to make sure that they do grow exponentially. So the big question here that we see is where do we get the next bound for search? Uh, well, in the past, um, IDA star was the most conservative approach you could use, which is use the minimum possible next F cost. And um, so that works when you have unit edge costs and the tree grows exponentially. But there has been work that looked at other approaches where they try to estimate how much the, uh, how much the F cost bound should increase. There's also been other work that looks at what happens if you have a different type of state space. Maybe it grows polynomially instead of exponentially. In this paper, we showed that you could grow with a different process to be able to get this exponential growth that we wanted. And so um, all of these approaches are nice. They work in very certain circumstances. But the problem is, is that we want to guarantee that no matter what the tree looks like, we're going to see exponential growth in the number of node expansions we perform. And so I want to show here what we'd like to have, which is an oracle that would tell us what we need to do in practice. So here we have f cost equals 11. For the root of the tree, we do one node expansion. What we'd like is an oracle that tells us how we can make the tree grow. And in this case, what we're going to see is that say is that the tree needs to grow either at least by a factor of two, but no more than a factor of eight. So we're going to put some constant bound. Those can be different constants, but for this talk, it'll be two and eight. So we ask our oracle, and our oracle says, look, if you just increase your f cost to 11.25, you'll do two node expansions, which will be within that limit. And we could ask the oracle again. We could, so we do a depth first search here. We ask the oracle again. We say, now give me the next F cost, where I'm going to do four node expansions, because we want to avoid this linear behavior. And the oracle would say, well, if you want between four and 16 node expansions, then use 13.97. That'll give you 11 nodes. Again, we continue. Now we want between 22 and 88. And the oracle would say, use 17.17. That'll give you 47 nodes. And if we can continue this process, we would see the tree continue to grow exponentially until we find the solution. And then we'd be able to terminate, again, with the optimal solution. Now, we're going to be able to use a approach from 1976 uh, called exponential search. And we're going to use that to build an oracle. So we want to build an oracle that can tell us what next F cost to use. And this oracle we're going to show is not very expensive in practice. Okay, And so this algorithm is going to assume that we have an array that is unbounded in length, but the items inside it are sorted. And we're going to look for some item inside it, in this case, the blue uh, item here that's the blue square. And what this does is it is going to query, and it's going to get back when it makes a query. So it's going to query an element in the array. And it's either going to be told it's too small, it's too large, or you found the element. So we query the first item, we query the second item. Both of these are so we're told were too small. And again, if we did this in a linear way, we would get a linear amount of work. But we can do better than that. Because now we're going to start growing this exponentially. So the fourth element, the eighth, the 16th, the 32nd element. And all of these, we get back that we're below the bound. Um, and then we continue here. And now we have a new query where it tells us it's above the bound. And then from here, we can just use a binary search to look inside here and find the actual element that we want, all using these, just, um, these queries that tell me less than or greater than the value that I'm looking for. And the running time, uh, because the, bound is the steps that we're doing in the array are growing exponentially, then it'll take log steps to get to the value, and then it'll take log steps to do the binary search to actually find it uh, in the worst case. So what we're going to notice here is that there's an equivalency between this algorithm where we have f costs. f costs are going to be our unbounded sorted array, where we have all possible f costs. There's some numerical accuracy. I'm not going to talk about that here, but that can be dealt with. And then we're looking for values. And the values we're going to be storing are the number of node expansions that are performed for each f cost. 
So uh, we don't know for a particular F cost how many nodes are expanded, but we could actually just run a, a depth first search or a bounded depth first search and we could tell it the answer. And the important thing here is that node expansions, as they increase the F cost, the node expansions are also going to be non-decreasing. Okay, so how does budgeted tree search work? Well, we're going to do something like an exponential search on F cost, and this is going to be the key operation. But we're going to add something called a budget in here that's going to make it efficient. So we have our F costs, we have some range that we're trying to find, some range of F costs that cause us to go from two times to eight times the number of node expansions. In this case, if 100 is the number of nodes I did at F cost 10, then I want somewhere between 200 and 800 node expansions. Anything that's less than 200, um, we could sample those F costs. It would cost less than 200 to do that. Anything that is greater than 800 uh, could be arbitrarily large. It could be that we sampled the F cost of 32 and we did a billion node expansions, and we'd like to avoid that. So what the budget is going to say is, look, all we want to know is are we less than, or are we equal to, or are we greater than the, this bound of windows that bound the amount of work we want to do in order to grow exponentially. So if we have an upper bound that says we want to do no more than 800 node expansions, then once we've done 800 node expansions and not actually solved the problem, we'll know we're in this upper, uh, this upper range of more than 800 nodes, and then we can stop the, the actual search. So the most we're ever going to pay when we do the sampling is actually this upper bound. Okay, so that's our budget of 800. Okay, so again, let's look at this, set up the same problem here, and this is what we're looking for. So we're going to sample 10 we know is 100 nodes, so now we're looking for something between 200 and uh, 800. So we sample 11, we sample 12, 14, 18, 26, all of these are less than the bound. We sample 42, which is greater than the bound. And again, when we sample this, what we're actually doing is we're doing a depth first search that is bounded by an F cost of 42. This will terminate when we hit uh, 800 node expansions, and then now we'll be able to do a binary search until we find that we fall within the final window that we want. Now, the running time of this for one, it, well, one iteration here is that um, I have the most I'm going to pay is this maximum bound, which in this case would be 800 nodes, that would be n of i, and then the f cost that I'm trying to find, it's going to take at most log of that steps, so the number, the f cost for the ith iteration. Now, overall, when I'm finding the solution, I have to do this for all iterations i. And if we look at this overall, what we see is that the final f cost is bounded by c star, the optimal cost. And then if we sum up the set of n of i's, well, we know because they're growing exponentially that they'll sum up that they'll be um, asymptotically, they'll be equal to n. And so the running time then of this algorithm in the worst case is n log c star. Um, so how does BTS work? Well, um, the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to run IDA star. That is, we're going to be conservative and we'll use the minimum F cost possible. And therefore, if we have a problem where IDA star is the right thing to do, we want to be conservative, then we'll just use IDA star every step and we'll actually no, go no further. We'll see the exponential growth in the tree and the behavior of BTS in this case is exactly identical to, BTS, uh, to IDA star. However, if IDA star fails with the conservative F cost to grow the tree, the number of nodes exponentially, then we're going to start growing the F cost exponentially with a constant budget. And if we grow the F cost exponentially and we find the solution within the budget, or sorry, find even just find a uh, F cost that searches um, the number of nodes we want, then we'll be done. But if we exceed our budget, then we'll do a binary search. Okay, so let's look at how this works in practice. These are the new two steps that are not that do not exist in IDA star. They're what we can add to IDA star to get the performance that we want. So here we see IDA star. Uh, in the previous iteration, it has done 13.97 was the F limit, and uh, it expanded 11 nodes. It was trying to get between 4 and 16, and so that worked out. So when we come into the next iteration, uh, as I said before, we had 13.97. Now we're going to use an F limit of 14.0, and that's simply what IDA star would do. That's the next possible F cost limit, and we're looking to do at least 22 node expansions. And when we do that, we're going to search this little tree up here, and we see, you know what, we only did 12 node expansions. That's below the window that we're looking for of 22 nodes. So now we're going to switch, um, it's, and we're going to do an exponential search. 
And the exponential search, basically what we're going to do is we're going to start taking the lower bound that we have, in this case 14.2, because that's the lowest f cost that hasn't been explored yet. And we're going to start adding an exponential term to it. In this case, it's 2 to the 0, which is going to give us 15.2. And when we search with that, we're going to go across this tree. We expand 18 nodes. 18 is still less than 22 nodes. And so now what we can do is uh, we have to continue to search. So now we're going to increase this bound from 2 to the 0, 2 to the 1. And actually, we've increased our lower bound from 14 to 16. So we're going to use this lower bound of 16.2. We search with 18.2. And uh, here we go across the tree. And what's going to happen here is that we're going to hit our node limit. Uh, you can notice, actually, the search is going back up the tree. This is because it's strictly not a tree. I'm drawing the tree on the screen. But there's actually a, uh, a search tree is being searched here. And uh, we hit our node limit of 88 nodes. And so we, we run out of our budget. And we have to stop. And now we're going to turn into a binary search. So uh, now I was using 18.2 for my search. But the maximum of cost I actually saw was 18.15. And so now I'm going to look at my two bounds. I know it is uh, no less than 16.2. I know 18.15 is actually too high. So I'm going to split the middle, and I'll search with 17.17. And when I do that, searching with 17.17, I'm going to come across the tree here. And I will uh, complete this entire iteration. I don't find a solution, but I've completed the iteration with 47 nodes which is growing by at least a constant factor. Okay. So how does budgeted tree search work? Well, it's IDA star, except that when IDA star fails to cause the tree to grow exponentially, that is the conservative bound of IDA star, we're going to increase it exponentially. And then we'll do a binary search if we need to, but using a budget on these searches to ensure us that we don't pay too much cost when doing these searches. If we compare the two approaches, we see IDA star on the left, Budgeted tree search on the right. Budgeted tree search um, aggressively increases the size of the tree and then draws it back if it needs to. And budgeted tree search is able to find the solution quickly, much more quickly than IDA star. And um, budgeted tree search may have to search the last iteration in its entirety. And that's just because um, it has to prove that it's found the best solution when it's found it. And we won't, in this case, watch IDA star finish. To summarize, budgeted tree search reduces the worst case of IDA star. If the tree grows exponentially, it'll behave exactly the same as IDA star, but otherwise it'll have a, a much better worst case. And IBEX is a more general algorithm that will solve similar problems in different contexts. And if you're interested in exploring this more, I have single agent search demos available on my webpage, and you can find one of these demos on budgeted tree search. You can also download the movies that were used in this talk, as well as the individual frames if you'd like to use them for teaching or for other purposes. Thank you for coming, and if you have questions, feel free to email me. Thank you.